You know, it seemed everywhere I went this past Saturday on campus, I saw people wearing original elephant wear shirts and pants from the locker room located on the University Strip. And we want to thank the locker room for providing us with original elephant wear. It's been a Tuscaloosa tradition the locker room has for 46 years. You can either drop by the store or you can check them out on the web. Get you a shirt. Uh, let's see, there it is right there. I'm seeing those everywhere. They're taking Tuscaloosa and Alabama by storm. Get by the locker room. See the good folks uh, over there at the locker room, and they'll hook you up with some elephant wear as well. All right, let's talk football recruiting. Rodney, and uh, one of the top prospects that is out there that's uncommitted is the running back out of Columbus, Isaiah Kroll. You know, this is a young man, Alabama and Georgia like to come battle it out to the end, but you know, Nick Saban's had a habit of signing a big time running back every year since he's been here. Tied once Isaiah Kroll. Yep, and he's a great player, Gary. He has great size, tremendous <coughs> speed. He has all the tools. He fits kind of that same mold that, of running back that Alabama's been getting. And again, you mentioned it. You pretty much summed it up, and we probably won't really know much more until closer to signing day, and it's Alabama or Georgia. Another uh, good size running backs out of Baton Rouge, Jeremy Hill. Jeremy Hill is committed to LSU. I've talked to people connected to LSU within the past 24 hours. And again, they acknowledge that he did make the visit to Alabama, and, but they feel, still feel very strongly that he is headed to LSU. But you never know what could happen down the stretch. You know, sometimes you have coaching changes or other turnover or what have you. and it, might allow Alabama an opportunity to slip in. Josh Pinkston's a prospect, a wide receiver. I'm uh, going to skip Josh Pinkston and going to talk about Enrique Florence. Because this is a guy that a lot of people, a lot of recruiting people have just written off for Auburn, but you talked to his coach, you had a, had a really good time at Tuscaloosa. Yeah, I talked to Coach Mike McCombs today at Valley. Enrique is a, a tremendous safety prospect. He's, he's actually playing quarterback in high school, but he will be a safety on the next level. And he's still considering several schools. A lot of people, as you mentioned, th thought he was a lock for Auburn, but he. Coach McCombs said every time he comes to Alabama, his response is the same when he comes back. It's wow, you know, and he, so he's clearly impressed with Alabama. And quickly, let's talk about uh, Pinkston, the wide receiver out of uh, Forest, Mississippi. Yeah. Kind of has flown under the radar, but Alabama continues to have a lot of interest. Well, Josh Pinkston's a great player, Gary. Uh, he really was did an outstanding job at Alabama's camp this summer where he caught the, the coaching staff's attention, and he does have an offer from Alabama. Um, Tennessee's also in there as well as all the Mississippi schools. Now, he is the brother of Todd Pinkston, if you remember the former NFL great, played for Southern Miss, and Todd Pinkston came over with Josh this weekend, Gary. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Again, the Mississippi schools are strongly in there, but he told us he's leaning to Alabama right now. So we'll see what happens. And, uh, you know, Alabama has some receivers committed, but they're still looking for, for some others. Good stuff, Rod, as always. Let's go to the phones. J.K. and Tuscaloosa first up tonight on TITV. J.K., how are you? I'm doing great, guys. Roll Tide to you. How y'all doing? Doing well, J.K. Rodney, I want to tell you, you've got the best 24-7, 365-day website on our program in the world. Wherever I travel, you're the first site I go to when I get up in the morning. And it's a wonderful site. I've been a long-time subscriber, and I recommend it to anyone, and I have to a lot of folks. Appreciate it, J.K. Thank you very much. Well, here's my question. Where is Petey Smith? I haven't heard one word or his name in months. What's up with Petey? Well, Ronnie, he's trying to he's trying to get in that linebacker mix. There's only about twelve or thirteen of those guys, and they can all play. But he's uh, he's 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 there. Yeah, and, and again, it's inside linebacker, and you know, it's it's kind of hard, as as Gary said, you've got a lot of guys in the mix. Obviously, you know, Nico Johnson hasn't played that much. Kind of somewhat of a surprise. He played. Uh, uh, um, in the second half considerably in the, in the opener. And, you know, C.J. Mosley's kind of made a name for himself a little bit early on and just trying to find some, some playing time, J.K. And I think as, as time goes on, remember, he's just a true freshman. And, and I think as time goes on, you'll see Petey Smith, hopefully he and Justin Fowler both make an impact at that inside linebacker spot. Absolutely. When you've got a talented roster, sometimes, Roddy, no matter how talented you are, you just have to bide your time. Okay, let's go to Dor and talk with Christopher. Christopher, welcome into TITV. Hey, fellas, what's going on? Christopher, how y'all doing? Doing well. Uh, just wanted to call not to really talk about the football team. I'm glad they won, but just wanted to call to let Kevin Turner know we heard about what happened to him and we was praying for him. Those are great thoughts, Christopher. He was an honorary captain on Saturday at the game and uh, was a great player here for uh, both Bill Curry and Gene Stallings. Terrific NFL football player with the Patriots and with the Eagles. And, uh, yeah, I, I agree. We'll keep him in our thoughts. And, and who can forget the 1989 season? I think he had 48 receptions as a fullback. I mean, think about yeah. that. 
Yeah, that offense, they threw it to everybody yeah. under Homer Smith, and he caught a lot of balls. That's right. All right, uh, Ken is in Elrod. Ken, you're next up on TITV. Ken, you with us? Yeah. All right, Ken, wanted to know who some of the best receivers Alabama is recruiting this year. Well, you mentioned they've got commitments from some. Uh, well, let's start with uh, the young men out of uh, Pritchard High School, out of Viger High School, well, Pritchard, well, Marvin Shin. Yeah, you have Marvin Shin. You have Danny Woodson from LaFleur. You have uh, Bradley Silva as a speedster out of the state of Louisiana who, you know, has been timed at under 10-4 in the 100 meters. You also have Daryl Collins from Gadsden City is, is committed. And, you know, Josh Pinkston is obviously another guy they're looking at. We mentioned him from Forest, Mississippi. And, uh, you know, who they who else is on the list would also include Nick Brazel. He's a tremendous player from the state of Mississippi. Now, again, when you're talking about Nick Brazel, Ole Miss is going to be very difficult to beat there because they're only 30 minutes right. from his hometown, Gary, and they have a strong presence there in Batesville, South Panola. All right, uh, we're really just getting cranked up good with our phone calls, so if you're on the line, hold. If you want to get through, give us a ring. We'll talk to you. More phone calls right after this. Alongside Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. Welcome back to Tider Insider TV. Let's get right back to the phones. Gary has been holding in fate. Gary, welcome in. Uh, yes. Go ahead, Gary. What about Curtis Grant from uh, Virginia? Yeah, Linebacker Curtis yep. Grant, right? Great, great player, Curtis Grant from Hermitage High School in Richmond, Virginia. One of the top linebackers in the country. And, you know, the funny thing is I talked to his coach last week, and Curtis has kind of gr gone silent. He's not going to talk about where he's visiting or who he's interested in. But, you know, I've – Text messaged Curtis a few times, and he's told me he is going to make an official visit to Alabama. I, I think it's Alabama and Florida right now, and, and a lot of people think Florida's kind of had the inside track, and, and Michigan's kind of gotten in there, and there's some others. But, uh, you know, Alabama has a shot. We'll see what happens. All right, uh, let's go over to center and talk with L.D. L.D., how are you? Just fine. Uh, I'd like to know with the spread offense, with the success of the spread offense this past weekend, if they uh, are going to look at playing it more uh, in the future. I'm sure, LD, that that's something they've got in their package, as we've seen before. I think a lot of what Alabama does offensively depends, first of all, on who they're playing, the game plan that they go in with, the adjustments that they make during the game. And then uh, when they make those adjustments, if something is working, they'll stay with it. And uh, it, so it really just depends. But I. I don't think that's a staple of Alabama's offense, but certainly something they've shown that they yeah. can do. And, and, and you talked about it this weekend. They kind of came out like that against LSU, mm -hmm. if you remember, last year. So, again, it depends on the opponent, what, they, what they're trying to achieve, and those types of things. Alabama's very multiple when it comes to offense. All right, let's talk to Joseph in Tuscaloosa. You're our last caller tonight. Joseph, go ahead. How are you doing, man? Roll Tide. Yes, sir. Hey, say, now, I, now, is there any chance that it might be a debate, in, a big debate in Tuscaloosa next year? between A.J. McCarron and Philip Sampson for the quarterback position next year because, from my understanding, according to the players, they're like neck and neck far in, as far as in practice. Well, Joseph, I, do, I think there will definitely be a big debate amongst the fans. I think there will be a great competition on the field. There won't be a debate on that coaching staff. They'll decide who the starter is going to be and, and at the appropriate time make an announcement. But it will be a spirited competition. And, and first of all, Joseph, they're both extremely talented. We do know that. And, and, and again, I wouldn't be surprised, to be quite honest with you, if we saw both of them play. You know, I know Nick Saban usually doesn't like to do that, but in this case, it would not surprise me. And he has done it some at yeah. LSU, so there is precedent for it. All right, thanks for our phone calls tonight. Coming up this weekend, the Tide looks to move to 3-0. and We'll make our predictions on the Duke game when TITV continues. We're both 2-0 and on our predictions so far. Next up for Alabama, Duke. Beautiful little stadium up there, but again, it is it is small. Yep, yep, sure is. 33,000 once. <laughs> I mean, Alabama draws three times that many to the uh, spring game. So, anyway, uh, on with this game. I think when you look at it, they, uh, uh, Duke gave up, what, 27 points to Elon College. They gave up 54 in a losing cause to, uh, to Wake Forest. Uh, that doesn't bode very well for them. I think Alabama, you know, scores at will. And uh, the, the thing I'd really look forward to see how Alabama's defense shuts down uh, Duke's offense. I hope we see a better pass rush. I hope we see better play in the secondary. 51-17 Alabama. Well, we don't discuss our picks in advance, but I I'm right there with you. We've been very close together this year, and, and I, I like Alabama to roll as well, 48-17. to I kind of agree that Duke's offense, even if it's late, I, I think they're going to throw it enough times. They're going to get a few points, but I don't see how they're going to slow down Alabama's offense at all. So we both think the tie will roll over the Blue Devils on Saturday afternoon. And don't forget, if you missed any of tonight's show, there's only one place that you can go for the replay, and that is WVUATV.com. We'll have the full broadcast posted later this evening. Also, 
dinner time. We're headed over to Buddy's Rib and Steak in Northport. Going to see our good friend Philip Guy and the folks over there at Buddy's. So uh, join us for dinner if you like. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week here on TIP.